Alrighty folks, welcome back to the garage. We've got the thirst trap here. We've got to be able to fit both tires on here. So we've got these wheels that we want to put on the back, but they don't have tires on them obviously, but we've got tires here. We've got some 265s for the back, 265s for the back, 235s for the front. We just want some street tires, you know, just something you can roll around on, something cheap. These are our compound tires, so they do have a bit of like grip to them. But we've got to roll the fender. So we have the fender roll over there. We're going to pull these off. We actually have wheel spacers for the front. We're going to see how that fits. And we have the new uh, tie rod ends so we can get it wheel aligned so it'll finally drive straight. Let's jump into it, I guess. We're actually going to start by bolting a one inch spacer in the front to see if that gives us the offset that we want in the front. Just because we bought a cheap square set of tires, like they're all eight and a half by plus 35, we're going to try and push the front out a little bit here just to give us a better look in the front. And then the rear should be pretty close to what we want with the meaty tires. You know what? That's actually not bad. It's a much better look in the front. Now today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. And the coolest part is you only pay for what you want. You get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when signing up. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of the box and you can either keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely at no charge. And even better than that, 90% of the products come from small businesses, many of which are located in the United States. And each box has a value of around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that. And these are my personal bespoke post boxes. We've got Hibernate, which are a super cozy set of house slippers. They have leather upper and laces, fox fur lining, and synthetic soles. These are a must have for me with laminate flooring in Canada. Plus they look awesome. And it comes with this cool little room spray. We also got a smoking and infusion kit for days that I want to feel middle class fancy. And it comes with a glass top, oak smoking platform, and a butane torch. We even have hickory wood smoking chips. And now my personal favorite, the Weekender. Look at this bag. The Weekender is an amazing bag. You can feel how durable it is. And for someone like me who is very, very, very hard on things, I know this thing will last. Just look at it. That's a tough bag. Yeah! Now to get 20% off your first Bespoke Post box, click the link down in the description and use code word BOOSTED20, all capitals, at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash boosted20, all lowercase. Let's get into the video. So Gina's gonna come out here. We're gonna take this thing for a drive, so we have to torque up the front wheels. Now if you need to torque the wheels and you got no one to hold the brakes for you, grab yourself your uh, best shitty screwdriver. Jam that in the vent. Now when you go to tighten it, it'll just jam your screwdriver in the caliper. Oh. It was on backwards. Pro tip from Boosted Lifestyle. What? I was giving them pro tips. Oh, oh you're filming so I shouldn't let out a big fart? The alien trash kid you be driving today. You were using the wrong key. That's the trunk key. Putting your seatbelt on before it's even started. Yep. Cold start. We have your, um, want to pop the hood? We have your cap for the power steering. I know you guys all seen that. So we didn't actually have a power steering cap. Uh, we have one now though. Now he's good to go. Turning radius is better. <laughs> it's so loud. It's so loud. Where do you want to go? Wherever you want to take me. Poundtown? Poundtown. Nobody 
It made it without dying. Look All right, at, look at this me. is the fender roller right here. It even says fender roller on it, so you know it's official. Um, the thing is, I've never successfully rolled fenders before. <gasps> Don't f it up! <laughs> Chipping the paint because it's rusty on the fenders. Mm -hmm. You're trying to film me manhandle it? Yeah. Jerk it. After some medium success with this fender roller last night, I'm just... I left it for a little bit. We're gonna take the tires, we're gonna go with those things mounted. Some of the bigger issues was, there was actually rust bubbles up in here. So as you were trying to do it, it was still gonna crack anyways, cause the little bit of rust bubbles. But for the most part, it is rolled up in the top. We just gotta get the back and the fronts and then do the other side as well. But like I said, take the tires on there, get the meats, put on the rims. I think for the most part that I got it, I'm extremely sweaty now. Uh, because when you're spinning over the 35 spline axles, you have to spin over the drive shaft too. And whatever neutrals are in the transmission, you're spinning that over too every time you go to move this thing. So it's a little bit of workout. But yeah, I didn't crack the paint or anything on this side. Uh, I used the heat gun a lot more and I slowly tapered like the angle of the roller. So the more you do it, the more you learn. And for my next trick, another thing to do on the to-do list. This is a bump steer kit. The main reason we got it is because the length of this is longer than a factory tie rod, longer than the factory one. Because I didn't know what the SN95 breaks, it actually sits out a little bit further and the inner and outer tie rods are not really long enough. So the one on this side's long enough, but the one on the other side only has like half an inch of threads and I'm not really comfortable with that. This one's gonna give us much more engagement. And then the other thing with a bump steer kit is you want your control arm and your tie rod end to be on like the same angle. So essentially when the car does a wheelie, the tires don't try and like tow in or tow out depending on the angle of the tie rod compared to the lower control arm. It kind of moves as one unit. So when it does a wheelie, the wheels still stay, stay, they stay straight. Had an issue staying straight there, Kyle. On the plus side, you can see our sick Black Sheep Industries waste gates there. Boosted Lifestyle gets you a discount at checkout. So I've got the weight on the control arm right now as if it's at ride height. You can see that the lower control arm is tilted down compared to where the tie rod is. It's tilted up a little bit. So we can move the tie rod to match the control arm, which is what this extended piece uh, is for right here. This goes, so this will replace that one. You put spacers here and then your heim joint on the bottom part of this piece. And that's how you get your right spacing. I'll just do it real quick for you. Spin you off. There was a lot of threads on this one. And now you can see we've got a ton of spacers here, but now our lower control arm and our tie rod is on the same plane. So that should reduce bump steer by a lot. I'm not an uh, astrologist, but uh, I can figure stuff out sometimes. All right, this is the one I was concerned about. Let's just see how many turns it was actually on there. So one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like nine and a half turns. Barely even sketchy. That's basically how many threads were left out there. I would drive like that for the wife, probably not. All right, the front end is done. The rear end, I was actually underneath there trying to get it aligned the best that I can by myself, by my eyeballs and a tape measure. And I actually put like a quarter inch in, in one of the lengths, just the way the torque box is welded up. One of them welded a bit more forward than the second one. So I tried to make up for it with the, uh, the arm, which kind of sucks because it's only a single adjustable. So it only adjusts on this end up here because the spring actually sits on this piece. So if it did rotate, then you could just kind of like rotate the spring off this thing. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not adjustable in the rear. So you actually have to like unbolt the front end, drop it down, unwind it, put it back up and bolt back together. Kind of annoying. That's why I try to get the best I can before bringing it to an alignment. But while the car is in the air, we have this wire right here. And this is our trans brake solenoid wire that has to go down to the transmission. So there's no time like the present to put this thing in because the car is off the ground. And because I've misplaced my wire stripper somewhere, we get to see what the new tires look like on the rims on the back of the car now because I got them mounted. Needless to say, the 265s aren't happy about being on an eight and a half inch wide wheel. So that is actually all the weight on the diff too, so. It ain't look bad. Trans brake wired up. 
I mean the solenoid is wired up. Which means we still have to add a trans brake button and a bump box button, but we're not gonna permanently mount those buttons, but I need to run some wires to see if they do work. So we need to wire up two of these ones on this connector for trans brake bump box. Probably gonna be the light blue and the dark blue one. A3, A4. Now I'm not the best at all this Holly stuff, but I can manage. So what we're gonna do, first thing, because we started from a map from my old Mustang, we're gonna go to the pin map. And because I did spend time making sure I knew where all the pins went, we know that our light blue, dark blue is A3, A4. Holly conveniently puts A3, A4 in here for you, so you know where, where it goes. Holly's nice like that. A3 as our bump in, and we're gonna put our trans brake launch as uh, a4, and we're also gonna add the rev limiter on our trans brake launch. So when we go, so when we go here, um, this will be activated. So we're gonna just drop that down to like 3000 right now. And while we're in here, we'll just set up our second fuel pump. It'll come on above four pounds or above 4,000 RPM. Now an easy way to test to see if this input output is gonna work, um, instead of RPM above 4,000, I can just switch it to RPM below 4,000 and since we're at zero RPM, it should kick on. And there you have it. I forgot, I got this set up super, super weird. You nerds out there might get it, but one is actually a 12 volt and one's actually gonna be a ground just the way it's set up. We actually have it set up like this so we can actually build ourselves a table. So the more boost that you'll have on the line, you can actually adjust the duty cycle so it doesn't bump like as far. Um, right now it's just 42 because that's what worked on my Mustang. Essentially, if we ground one wire, you'll hear the trans brake activate. And if we pause it up the other wire, you're gonna hear it um, clack as if it's uh, cycling. So that's actually how you get your bump into the stage is uh, it, it's the duty cycle on the um, trans brake. And with the big canister style solenoid that I had on my old transmission, I've since swapped it out. Um, you need a much higher duty cycle. You need to be like 85%. And that sounds kind of crazy. So just listen to the difference now, so. Hear the difference? And basically you just want to let go of reverse enough that it goes boop and like creeps forward a little tiny bit. And the last piece of the puzzle. It's plugged in, we just need some two tied ticky tape and that'll just sit right there. Now after all the years of owning a seven inch dash, I've never actually messed with the buttons on the dash. So I'm gonna do that now and see if I can configure myself out a layout. This is currently what we have, and I'd like something maybe a little bit better than that. <laughs> All right, I think I got a good layout. We got the green for the car. We have our air fuel up here, GPS speed, our fun air down there, and then our battery on this side. <laughs> and the only thing is the speed is a mile an hour, and I don't know how to change it to moose antlers per pine tree. Let's take it for a drive. I did a quick alignment with the tape measure and uh, we get to drive it out now. Why is cold start not happy anymore? So we've got our little exposed wire here, and all I have to do is touch out to ground and we got our trans brake. So let's just see if it'll get on the trans brake. Oh my God, right now. Let's just make that 4,000. I think once we add a boost controller, we can spike the boost up a little bit, add a little bit more timing, it's gonna be perfect. That was like, converters, it seems like just perfect. Wowee! We still have a little bit of a coolant issue going on here. I might have forgotten to eat today, so I'm having a triple decker peanut butter sandwich, but with like both the end pieces because nobody eats those. I'll eat it though. But what do you guys think about the wheels and the spacing? I feel like it goes with the theme like really well. 
of this little probing mobile. The whole thing behind it is getting loser. We're going probing. I'm definitely gonna have to try something a little bit different with the coolant on this thing because I, wa I want it to run ideally at less than 200 the whole time. Um, so whatever I plan to do there afterwards. But just some trans brake and bump box buttons now and we're all set and this thing's ready to rock. And then we can actually go test it with the draggy after we get a wheel line because it really needs a wheel alignment pretty bad. I also figured out our issue with this, our triple compound Turbo Civic doesn't have an intake air temp sensor. That's why I wasn't getting into VTEC. And I knew we did something like that on Dyna where we stole an air sensor from another car to put on that one just to get VTEC to work. And I think that's our issue why we couldn't get over 5,500 and it was hitting like a boost cut. So I'll get an intake air temp sensor for that thing and then we can test that thing out too. And I've been contemplating getting this out of the garage for now, grabbing my personal Mustang, the SN95, and uh, slamming the motor and the trans together and putting that in that car so I can start fabricating on that one. But for today, since there's a bunch of sunlight still out left today, this thing. I'm gonna be working the rest of my time on this thing, which I'm gonna end this video when I start working on this thing. But this is our Gidway pit trike. We did build a couple versions of this. Version one right here, this thing was badass. Version two ended up not being so badass because we we're trying to fit the 420cc engine in it. But this one, 420cc engine. But this one, the 420cc engine is gonna fit really nice in there. So every $1 spent on boostedlifestyle.com gets you one entry to get this thing. It just helps out the channel, man, and you get some cool merch. But I'm going to head inside. I got to grab another peanut butter sandwich because I'm still starving right now. And then I'm going to come back and build this thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, the update on Thirst Trap. And we're going to get it to a track soon, hopefully. Peace easy and get that V. That was a successful first burnout. Hell yeah!